everyone. Welcome to Babies with Knives. I'm your host, Alice Peng, aka Lala Twiddle on the boards. And today we're going to be playing Ascendant by Autark with creator and uh, company, well, it's only employee as I understand it, <laughs> Alexander Macris. Hey, Alex, how's it going? Hey, it's going good. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, we're excited to have you. I'm really interested in seeing what this game's all about. So I'm going to be playing a speedster that duplicates and her name is alex uh, alice glass so yeah i'm looking forward to trying out this pregen i got with me is brandon powers one of my well my only co-host my regular co-host hey brandon howdy howdy uh today i am going to be playing the super mage tarot um which uh i'm certain i'm going to find out lots about tarot and what this system can do as we go along so i'm super excited Awesome. All right. And with us again today is Adam Myers, creator of Spheres of Power and Spheres of Might. Hey, Adam. Hello. And I am playing Arbalest, who is gotcha. an archer. Mm. I decided, because this is a superhero system and I don't know anything about it, I decided to ask for a Hawkeye base, give me a normal but special person. So... That's all I know, but I'm curious to see how that plays. All right. Uh, Alice, you forgot to say your character's superhero name. You, you oh, gave her secret identity right. away. You're right. Her name is Flash Mob. <laughs> Flash and Mob, a duplicating Flash. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. I mean... so. All right. Well, should we dive in? Yes, please. Sounds good. Take it away. All right. All right, so the premise of the scenario we're going to run here is that you guys are working for Dreadnought Inc., which is a private police corporation that provides super-powered crime-fighting services to cities across, across America. It's 9.30 a.m., Monday, March 10th, and your boss, Commander Michael Crow, has called you into the Dreadnought offices in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, and uh, so he says, so, thanks for coming in so quickly, team. Sit down. We, we have an urgent problem today. This fact is not widely known, but the CDC operates an Institute for Experimental Medicine out of Research Triangle Park. The building is often called the Black Fortress because of its brutalist architecture and the horizontal steam builds. You may have seen it on the commute to work. If not, I've put it on the data screen here for you. And he puts it onto the data screen. Loading, loading. Loading. Okay. Oh wow. Wow. Ooh. That just has super villain written all over it. Yes, I it mean, does. Might as well stick a skull on the top. So you're the architect. Us in there? Yes. So the institute's alarm systems were triggered at 4:03 a.m. this morning. An automated security system deployed immediately, which has sealed all the exterior doors and all of the exterior windows with steel plating. No one's come in or out since. The CDC is concerned this may be an Ascendant-related incident and has asked Dreadnought operatives to investigate. They've provided us with floor plans of the building. Objective number one is to secure a serum labeled Compound C from the Toxicology Research Laboratory on the second floor. Let me get you those floor plans onto your data pads. Um, Mr. Crow. Uh, yes. Is there an... Are there openings above or below? Can we get a floor plan for above or below the building? There are no accessible uh, approaches from above or below, I'm afraid. No mm. basement? No, no garage? Basement. Okay. No. Okay. Ooh. No problem. I can cover that in half a second. <laughs> Uh, right. Mr. Crow, you did say the compound was on second floor, and that's the first floor. I've just now added the second floor, and you can see where the compound is located there. I've highlighted it with a purple star. Ah. All right. Understood. Now, we've cleared the office park to a thousand meter radius around the building. SWAT forces from Rally PD have formed a perimeter and checkpoint, and I have an armored transport truck ready to take you to the facility. Any questions? So do we know anything about who triggered the alarm, or is it simply the place is on lockdown, we're blind, but somebody got in? 
There were a small number of employees inside at the time. There was a janitorial crew of three, Jose Cruz, Alice Wilson, and Bob Baker. There was a security guard, Jack Ferrucci, and there was the night shift coroner, Dr. Charles Westminster. No one has been able to get in touch with any of them. Uh, now, it's important that you know, the IEM is a highly secure facility. It's entirely air-gapped with 99.9% .9 effective wireless shielding, so no data goes in or out unless it's carried. And why would a facility like that have a night coroner? All I was told is that it was need to know and that we don't need to know. Sounds ominous. All right. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. I, I, our probability estimates are that it's 75% likely to be within your capabilities. So the floor guess... plans, the, the floor plans only seem to cover the bottom two floors. Well, the ground floor and one above. But uh, the picture that you showed us on this, the, that shows four, maybe five uh, levels above ground. Uh, do we have any floor plans for those? And what about those that are below? Uh, the floors above second floor duplicate uh, the second floor floor plan, just with different laboratories. As we're talking, I'm shoving food in my mouth. Uh, I hand you an energy drink. <laughs> You'll need your energy for this one, Flash Mob. All of you. Um, I guess my only other question would be if there is no information on who broke in, but I assume the, the defenses have trapped them inside is the assumption? There's no evidence of a break-in at all, actually. So we're really puzzled as to what's happened. So we're just walking in to find out why the alarm got triggered. It could be a hostage situation. It could be anything at this point. Correct. And we have no way of finding out because it's EMP shielded. So we can't look in and we can't get phone calls in. We can't get data out. So, Alex, I've got uh, non-transmitting, unenhanced scrying. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, that means that you can scry like a crystal ball to locations of your choice, um, and it's non-transmitting, so it doesn't use a signal. It's just a psychic ability, so the EMP shielding doesn't affect you. Okay. Would, during this meeting, am I able to multitask and uh, start you know, poking into this building a little bit with that, or do I have to be closer? Um, what is your power level? What's your SPs of the power? The net SP? Yeah. All right, that is 10. 10. Okay. So 10 means you need to be within one mile. So you're a little bit too far away right now. Okay. Yeah. I'll bring it up later on when we're in the troop carrier. Okay. All Do right. We have so, to get um, in the carrier? It's always so cramped in there. It's only well, cramped you know, when you start sprouting out yourself all over the place. Keep hey, yourself contained. It's not my fault. Maria does not like to be in here. She gets really noisy. Yes, I know, uh, Maria. We're just about done with the briefing. Uh, can Maria we get uh, can we get pictures and uh, some way to verify identity of these five individuals and uh, also work history for them? Absolutely. I've actually made arrangements for someone from the CDC to be waiting for you in the truck. He'll have additional information, possibly, and some equipment. Excellent. Uh, uh, are we able to also just check in on any uh, family members of these uh, these five, see if anybody is uh, uh, sick, been running into problems, uh, gambling debts, or just came into a lot of money recently? We have some of the non super operatives following those leads. Uh, if anything turns up, I'll let you know. Aces. All right. Well, it sounds good to me. I'm ready to go. Excellent. Well, good luck. And remember, secure compound C. That's your primary objective. And what are our secondary objectives? Find out what's going on and rescue any survivors. All right. Okay, excellent. Good luck, team. He, uh, he dismisses you to go brief another superhero team. And uh, you guys uh, march down to where your armored transport truck is waiting. Uh, uniformed operatives open up the back doors for you in a really cool montage scene. Mm -hmm. And um, inside is, uh, you know, a military-grade um, protected capsule filled with various equipment, which you can access if you'd like. Um, and then there is a woman in a scientist's lab coat um, with horn rim glasses uh, nervously sitting on a stool within. And uh, she sort of does a crouch wave at you um, as you enter. And she says, I'm Dr. Rihanna Stevens. As, as we walk in in this montage sequence, is, is there wind blowing from nowhere in particular, making our hair look cool as Arbalist is checking his quiver and all sorts of cool things are happening? 
Um, yeah, absolutely. And there's like an there's a there's a, a soundtrack mysteriously playing in the background as well. Um, Question for you. Uh, the soundtrack's not mysterious. Flash Baba is carrying a boombox on one of the duplicates. <laughs> it's just out of shot. <laughs> That's right. She has well one extra duplicate. Got the fans. She's just doing <laughs> that, the whole. That would be Sandy. She's got one extra duplicate always out of, off camera doing that. Yeah. That so one of the one of Flash Mob is doing this, just like keeping us in the shot. And that's that's our point of view, apparently. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, this will get uploaded later to the uh, to the branding company, which um, you know licenses your IP out. Yep. So. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So I have a question regarding equipment. When I dupe, does the equipment I'm carrying dupe with me? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's very convenient. Okay. Out of curiosity, and this is just me at trying to understand the system, I have the Arbalest device, and like most of my powers are related to my really cool bow. Does that mean that I could just have her duplicate my really cool bow? I just no. So, having her split? so devices are different from objects. A device is something that's integral to a character, like Iron Man's armor or Thor's hammer. And for inexplicable reasons that vary from character to character, it can't be mass produced or replicated. Okay. An object is something that you can get in the real world. So like a flashlight, a walkie talkie. So the reason for the split is that I don't want to charge precious character points for you to have a flashlight. So I needed a way to differentiate between stuff that actually is worth character points and stuff that you just buy at the grocery store. Okay. okay. So, so the stuff that's in the transport truck is equipment. Uh, it's not devices. And so she could not duplicate your device. If she owned a device as built into her character, then the duplication would duplicate the device for that for that duplicate as well. But she can't duplicate your device. No. Yeah. All right. And, you know, you would hand wave that as special, you know, unobtainium composites that can't be easily replicated or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. Let's okay. Let's go. Um. So the so, equipment that's available, if you're curious, there's flashlights, handcuffs, military-grade night vision goggles, tool belts, walkie-talkies, gas masks, submachine guns, heavy handguns, flashbang grenades, and smoke grenades. Okay. How about any sort of grappling hook or way to ascend to the outside of the building? Um, not provided right now, but they could certainly get that for you before you depart. Alex, Are would there... you... Oh, go ahead, Adam. No, so I was just curious, because there are at least windows or something it seems on the building facing the outside so i would not there, mind having some way to ascend or descend from the second story he said right. that they're locked down right now so metal has covered the uh the glass at this point correct although you guys are tough enough you could probably break through it mm -hmm. so a uniformed lackey says Ab absolutely arbalist i'll bring that to you right away and he no, goes running off okay. He's like, I'm so excited. Arbalist, talk to me. And then he comes uh, running back pretty soon with a grapple gun uh, and 50 uh, feet of rope. Okay. Alex, would you mind typing up the list of in in the inventory for us real quick? So we be happy to do so. Thank you so much. Uh, I will say at that point, um, I would definitely start picking up some handguns. And you guys know that one of my... One of my duplicates has a personality that has an absolute obsession with guns, while the rest of mine don't really like guns so much. But so she's uh, she's telling me, get that gun. OK, OK, I'm working on it and trying to make sure that I get all geared up right now. All Since right. With me. OK, so are you getting or have you replicated then? Um, or duplicated yourself? I once I gear up, this way we're saving gear. Uh, once I gear up, I will be duplicating so that they stop uh, being loud in my head. Great, great. Okay, so you're getting yourself all geared up, um, and uh, the um, the woman in the uh, uh, armor transport truck kind of looks at you guys curiously. She says, "Oh, I, I've I've not seen ascendants close up before. Uh, very excited to see what you're capable of." Thank you for agreeing to accept the mission. Oh, we're just cap as capable as the next person. Just, you know, superior in every way. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, of course. Uh, well, thank you so much for taking time to take our mission. Um, I'm Dr. Rihanna Stevens from the CDC. Um, uh, I was uh, involved with setting up the Institute for Experimental Medicine. We'll have about five minutes uh, as we travel to the site. If you have any questions. 
Is there any landlines going in and out of this place? I know it's uh, it's uh, gapped so that we can't get signals in. Uh, there are four landlines, but none of them are responsive. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, and last night uh, on the on the telly, there was outbreak. Have you seen that? The 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 TV show outbreak. The, the movie with Dustin Hoffman. Uh, th there's a monkey, it bites somebody, and I don't know. I was coming in and out uh, during parts of it. I'm just wondering, are there any monkeys or diseases that we need to be very careful about? Uh, you sense uh, that she um, is being a little bit evasive. Do you, would you like to use charisma to try and pry this out of her? Uh, sure, why not? Okay, what is your character's charisma score? Uh, um, uh, might agility value. I'm highly Valor. valued. Valor. Valor, okay. Resilience insight charisma. Charisma is eighty. Uh oh eight. 80 okay. The cost. Yes. All right. Her uh, her resolve is only five, so you have a plus three bonus on the chart for the roll. Okay. So go ahead and make that roll. Uh is it roll high or roll low? Roll low. Okay, well thirty three. So I go All to the right. line with three and that's an orange success. Am I reading that right? Absolutely correct. Okay. So she, um, she, after a moment, kind of gulps, and she says, well, the Institute conducts genomic testing on post-mortem cancerous tissue of humans and animals. So there are uh, animals uh, within the facility, but they're animal cadavers. They're deceased. So we've weaponized cancer, and we need to make certain that we, we don't do that. Uh, no, no, we're, we're not trying to weaponize cancer. The cancerous tissue is being treated with compound C. It's a biological catalyst to take advantage of the high growth factor of cancer to establish metaplastic genomic expression. We're using ascendant biology to cure cancer. Okay, then just out of curiosity, because this is a comic book world, mm. and I have just gotten done playing the PS4 version of Spider-Man. <laughs> Oh, I just finished that in like a month what, ago. In what ways can this using cancer to fix diseases double as a mass pandemic weapon and or what should we be on the lookout for pretty much? Well, within the world of Ascendant, superpowers are um, powered by metaplasts, which are in your cells. And just like a chloroplast allows a plant to extract solar energy and redirect it for its purposes, a metaplast allows you to extract energy from the zero-point energy field or vacuum energy and then redirect it to your purposes, which is how superheroes are able to effortlessly create and manipulate energy that they shouldn't be able to. Um, metaplasts are uh, not present in 99% you know, of people. It's been found that epigenetic activation um, can cause a metaplast to activate in a person. So uh, high stress, certain chemical toxins, um, certain meditative practices have been known to trigger the genes that activate your metaplast. So what you would understand them to be doing here is um, they're trying to take advantage of the high growth rate of cancer to try and rapidly create lots of metaplasts. Okay. That it'll be totally, sounds it'll be like totally one of the, fine. Yeah, that that just sounds like one of those things that the supervillain then uses to create super soldiers or whatnot, but I don't think I'm smart enough to know anything, so I'm just going to hope for the best. Okay. Um as <laughs> As we finish gearing up and I start splitting the first one that I split, she goes, oh my gosh, this is so boring. I'll just see you all there. Bye. She's going to take <laughs> off. All right. The truck hasn't even started moving yet. Yeah. You're out and um, you move a thousand miles per hour. Mm -hmm. So uh, you move roughly 15 times faster than a 60 mile per hour vehicle. Um, it would have taken about two minutes to get there at 60 miles per hour. So it takes you about, uh, what, five seconds. Okay. And on, as, she's, as, uh, as Jude is leaving, Jude uh, tosses the, uh, weapons that, the weapons that were geared onto me. And, you know, it's bogging her down. She doesn't like it. So she's tossing it back at the truck as she's hauling off. Absolutely. <laughs> as she appears and quickly disappears, all I've got to say is, hey, Jude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, Dr. Stevens is, is quite taken aback at that. Her hair kind of goes back wild like this from the sonic boom as you go flying off. 
and um and like her nose is bleeding a little bit and she's like oh gosh i hope that doesn't happen often uh, uh it's, it was just that way you'll get used to us um i have a i have a favor to request i know that your primary mission is to secure compound c but my harvard classmate dr charles westminster was the night shift coroner he was um his job was to perform autopsies on the cadavers that had been treated during the prior day he, he joined the team after his wife died of cancer last year and it was very hard on him to lose her so unexpectedly. He was never the same. Uh, it would mean a lot to me if you could rescue him if he's still alive. So, in the cancerous zombie animal apocalypse that has been brewing within this facility for the past few hours, he might be either the mastermind behind it or the first victim of it. She says, we don't have any evidence at this time that this is a cancer zombie animal apocalypse. Who needs just evidence? Wait. It's we'll get just there. the way things happen. A Schrodinger's zombie animal apocalypse, then. Yes. We cannot, yes. at this time, prove nor disprove the existence of it. Wait, Schrodinger was that weird cat man, right? Exactly. Uh, cat fetish. Oh, wait, no, I right. thought Schrodinger was that cat ascendant that we teamed up with last week. Oh, him too. <laughs> oh, well, yes, oh. then definitely. That would be a zombie apocalypse waiting to happen. I, I, I don't think that Dr. Westminster would be trying to create super zombies. His wife died because she was exposed to radiation by an ascendant. He, he's not very fond of ascendants. Don't worry. They never mean to make any of that happen. It just happens because, well, they put this and then that. And what did Schrodinger say again? Um, the atom size of something neutron plus... Yeah, something with, like... Very long letters and numbers. I don't know. But... I thought it was screenshot or it didn't happen. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, while you've been chatting, the armor transport truck has um, been driving along. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're heading, you're heading now to the Institute for Experimental Medicine. Uh -huh. um, meanwhile, you've already arrived, uh, Jude. So um, yeah. when you get there, uh, there's a SWAT team perimeter has been set up a thousand meters around the building. Um, it is even more ominous in person um, than it is uh, on the visuals. Uh, it's an overcast, cloudy day with dark black clouds um, that sort of gloom ominously on the silhouetted shape uh, of, this, uh, of this medical fortress. Um, the SWAT officers um, are expecting you, and they say, Flash Mob, when's the rest of your team arriving? Oh, you know, I mean, uh, they said like five minutes, so... Probably next year. They're really, really slow. I'm just going to go take a look around. Okay, bye. Okay. Uh, what do you want to do? I, I want to run around the perimeter and just see, first off, any weak points. Uh, also, I know that the windows are, the metal came down, but places like this, there generally are um, these internal gutter-like systems that, you know, these pipes that, pipes that would uh, be, leading out to the outside world, want to look at those uh, and just see any weak points and any possible entry points, not necessarily for our size, but small or, uh, you know, tiny. Okay. So you have 10 SPs uh, of, how many SPs of super speed do you have? Five, 10? Uh, SPs of super speed, I have five. Okay. So what that means is that in three seconds, you um, can get two minutes of investigation working. So in five minutes, you can get an hour of investigation done because you're hyper fast. So what you're going to do is you're going to use your insight, which is your INS, okay. and then you're going to add 10 to that, and you're going to make a percentile roll for me. Okay. And this is you're doing an investigation. Great. Uh, 47 is what I rolled. So 47. Okay. All right, um, so I'm going to look on the chart here against the difficulty value that you don't know. Right, my insight is three. Okay, so you're at 13. Uh, all right, so you do uh, or two laps um, around the building, and um, on the second lap, you spot that the uh, window in the northeast corner of the building um, has uh, been dented from the inside as if something is trying to break out through it. Um, that, and that is, uh, that is, I will show you, um, where it is. Oops, that didn't work. So, 
So you see the uh, upper right there. Yes. So that window, uh, that window facing the to the east, uh, is dented from within. Um, otherwise, all of the uh, all of the building uh, has been secured. Um, the doors are steel. The major doors on the south entrance there look like vault bank vault doors. They look very hard to pry open. Um, and then all of the windows have been shuttered with steel. Okay, and the and the one that got banged into is also shuttered with steel, but it has a right. dent. Okay, I want to go up and uh, can I run vertically and such like that, like the flash can? Uh, you cannot by default, but if you spend a hero point, you can power stunt that and do so. How many hero points do we start with and how do we get them back? Uh, each of you has 18 hero points. Uh, you'll get them back at the end of the session. So you have 18 for the session. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to the front. Okay. And uh, where they had cordoned off. And I will, uh, uh, you know, I start tapping shoulders of officers. I run from one, then to the other, then to another, and start and just quickly ask, got a grappling gun? Then to the next one, got a grappling gun? Got a grappling gun? And I don't even wait for them to stop to answer. <laughs> Okay. Well, maybe you should have had the foresight to ask for a grappling gun from that truck. I'm well aware of that. All right. Well, right about now, the truck pulls up. And, uh, um, I would like to have been doing my scan. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So when you get to within a, when you get to within a mile. Yep. Yep. All right. So, um, so basically, the way this works is you just pick a point, and I tell you what you see from that point. Okay. Well, um, why don't we? First of all, um, he we're gonna I'm gonna check out main autopsy um, on the first floor, and so as as we're we're conversing and such with the doctor, I go, oh, pardon me, love, I've got a call to take, and then I'm gonna zone out and pay attention to my scrying. Okay, so uh, when you look into main autopsy, you gaze upon a horror show. Um, there are uh, seven cadavers that were in various stages of um, being dissected. Their ribs have been broken open. Um, their organs partially removed. Uh, and they are up and moving and walking around. And their bodies are sickeningly covered with pus-covered buboes that look like grotesque tumors leaking white fluid on the floor. So... You called it with the zombie cancer apocalypse. <laughs> zombie cancer <laughs> animal apocalypse. Yes, these oh, are human sorry. cadavers, so you were totally wrong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Completely wrong. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick. That's uh, gloves, arbalist, more gloves and booties. We're going to want booties and gloves. <laughs> Here, I, I, pass, I pass some over to Flash Mob. Make more of those. <laughs> All right, so you guys are suiting up with plastic gloves and plastic booties and gas masks for sure. Um, Dr. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Rihanna Stevens says, oh, I can't believe I forgot. And then she produces pass cards. She says, uh, these pass cards will let you through the interior doors if need be. And how so do we how get do we... through the exterior? Yeah. Uh... She says, I assumed you had super powered ways to do that. Okay. So just wanted to make sure it was all right if we blew a hole in the wall. I mean, we this is a very expensive installation, so we would certainly hope that you'll minimize collateral damage to an American government facility. Oh, don't Let worry. The all. explosives that Arbalest uses are also very expensive. We'll only use the best quality on this place. Okay. Question for you, Alex. Uh, am yes. I mind linked with my duplicates? Uh, no, you are not. But your duplicates always do exactly what you would do in that circumstance, and so you can you can control them as if you are mind linked because they would know what you wanted to do in that sort of circumstance. Well, yeah, but it's more the fact that um, sh if she can communicate back to the cab at the moment. You have walkie talkies, don't you? Oh, that's true. Walkie talkie. So sure. She will uh, communicate mm -hmm. back. And uh, when it comes to the walkie talkie, it sounds basically like, D -d 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 -d, and you guys can't even understand it. And I go. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Because you're talking in super speed. Yep. And I go, and I just kind of blink and I go, Jude says that there is. 
can she uh, and you know I, I I super speed to make sure she said to you know super speed back talk again and she super speed through again and I speak back and says Jude says that in the northwest there is a window a steel barred uh, a steel plated window that's been banged into from the inside there's a big dent that looks like somebody's been trying to bang their way out so whatever we're facing is strong very very uh, strong first or second floor second first floor. oh first floor yeah I was in the first floor. Got it. Let me look. And I uh, go ahead and just try and check the area for uh, of that area. Okay. So uh, you are looking at a storage room uh, filled with a variety of cleaning supplies. Um, there is a Hispanic man who you recognize as Jose Cruz by the photos that they showed you. Um, Jose has a heavy uh, metal toolbox and he is desperately banging it on the metal window every so often, um, trying to break it down. Uh, he has a long cut on his right arm where he's kind of leaking um, some blood with some pus mixed in. Uh, he seems covered with sweat and terrified. And you notice that the door behind him has been completely barricaded. He's pushed all sorts of stuff up against it. So, uh, go ahead, Adam. Assuming we talked back and forth or something, because I'm the only one who has no powers of scrying. But um, if we're dealing with giant zombies and or infected people like Miss CDC, what do we do with them? Do you have a nice, like, decontamination tent set up? We can shove someone who's zombifying? Uh, or so we or an arrow. Can you give him an arrow for that? He's good uh, with arrows. Any live humans that you recover will absolutely be quarantined. FEMA is setting up a tent at the perimeter, so you'll want to escort them to that. Um, you should avoid having physical contact. Definitely don your gloves and keep your uh, air filtration systems activated. If you encounter any um, uh, uh, deceased individuals that are a problem, um, then you would not be violating any federal law to return them to their deceased state because they are, in fact, deceased. Oh, look! Okay. FEMA's setting That's... up, and right next to them is PETA. <laughs> um, no, we, we actually um, have refused to allow PETA onto this campus. They had some opposition to the valuable ground bacon cancer research we were doing here. Um, okay. Any, uh, so... Well, when we... Go, Adam. I was going to say, so when we get there, we should blow a hole in the wall to help this poor man escape and just send him straight to the decontamination tent because I really don't want him hulking out like between us freeing him and, and whatever whatever happens to him. I'm sorry, do we have evidence of hulking out? You're speaking like this has already happened. and uh, oh, He's up bending the wall with his fists. No, uh, with his toolbox, but still, I mean, I'm assuming that this is, uh, this is supposed to be this, uh, reinforced material. Do we have an engineer that we can talk to about uh, what went into the construction or the schematics of, for, for this? Because I don't think that, uh, if it's supposed to keep this facility secure, that one man beaten on it with a toolbox should be producing noticeable dents on the outside. And Taro, Jude wants, to, uh, Jude wants to know if there's anything else you need her to look through. Or look for? Uh, other pl points of entry, uh, weaknesses, something interesting, um, snacks. She did all of that already, as usual. Uh, she took the snacks out of the uh, several of the police cars and uh, ate all of it already. Don't eat the Cheetos. Not the, hot, right. the hot Cheetos. Uh, you guys see a really angry police sergeant suddenly storms forward and he says, Where the fuck are the donuts? <laughs> <laughs> all gone. Uh, Jude has uh, the the powdered sugar and powdered jelly sugar. here all over, all over, and there's some jelly on the corner of her mouth because she's like, no, no, no. done. Smith, I need you to get more donuts. We're going to be here all day. It's a mile away. It's going to take 20 minutes. What is something? Go. Donuts. Now. Lights if, and sirens. Go. If Jude is still waiting for her team at this point, Jude is going to spawn. Uh, go to the donut place because apparently it's a mile away and carry back a box, a huge thing of donuts and just toss the money on the, uh, on the counter, right. you know, didn't okay. wait for any help, but came back with a pile of, <laughs> pile so of as you, 
as you leave, there's, you know, sort of a sonic boom behind you, which sprays all of the donut frosting and powder all over the people within the facility who are entirely covered head to toe in white and chocolate sprinkles. And um, you arrive. Uh, some of the donuts are slightly melted by the high heat of your speed, but they're still quite edible. Okay. And um, the sergeant, uh, are, are they safe to eat? I start eating them. <laughs> Oh, he grabs the box. <laughs> he, gra- he better grab some before they're all gone. <laughs> all right. We've all now arrived and um, have geared up. Um, the CDC uh, doctor, Rihanna, uh, heads over to the FEMA tent um, where she's in, a, she's in a quiet conversation with some other people over there that are sort of suiting up with gas masks and filtration systems. And um, the SWAT troopers are all giving you those sort of like respectful nods, like now the badasses have come, go get them. And uh, and retreating. <laughs> okay. Uh, did we get an answer on whether he should be able to bend this metal by uh, beating on it with a toolbox? Um, so, uh, according to our estimates, it would take about an hour to break through. So, he's been at it for some time, so it seems plausible it could be dented with ordinary human strength if he has a sufficiently heavy object. How does his that toolbox looks- look when I was looking at it? That's quite some uh, endurance. Looks- Really, really dented. That's some endurance there. Yes, yes. Well, he, is, he, he, is, he is clearly afraid for his life. And you said he was leaking pus as well as blood from his arm wound. Does this look like the white pus that uh, the cadavers had? Do you want to go back and take a closer look? Sure, why not? All right, so you're going to be using your insight here. This is a medicine check, so go ahead. Okay, so insight is eight. No okay, medicine you, skill. Your difficulty value is only five, so you're at plus three. Fifty-nine, so on three, that is a yellow success, it looks like. All right. So um, you are able to see that the pus is not actually from his wound. It looks like it was splattered onto the wound by whatever hit him. Gotcha. So he might not be a zombie. Hard to Yet. tell. Or it, it could be leaking in even now, and he's a fool for not cleaning it off. Well, so, when we arrive, um, I'll, we'll go and free him. Unless someone has a different plan. I'm just wondering, do we have, like, when when you need to go through uh, decontamination after being exposed to radiation, they've got all the sprays that they hose you down with. Could maybe Flash Mob get some of those ready to hose this guy down? The moment you see him, basically? Exactly. Okay, yeah, you can get a decontamination hose from the FEMA tent. No okay. problem. Um. So, yeah, uh, Alice, the main one, or, and Maria will go run off and go get two hoses. All right, they're back. Okay, cool. Um, Apollo will uh, basically, you know, line up with our archer, arbalist, and uh, so what we shooting? Okay, so uh, you can see on the map that the uh, it's up in the northeast corner. Um, you could go, uh, your arrows have a range of a mile, so you could actually be back all the way at the police perimeter and shoot, um, and you have telescopic vision, so I don't think you'd have any issue hitting it. Um, you have a thermal arrow, which you can use if you'd like. Sorry, I uh, was looking at something else on the side that just popped up, taking care of that. I'm going to sh- do what with an arrow? Alice will point out before you go, um, because Apollo's like, what we shooting? Uh, Alice will point out, uh, how do we know that you won't be blasting him when you open it? Is there a way we can oh. signal for him to move out of the way and take cover? Of course there is. I walk up to the building. Okay. You're now right outside the building. I... I- do shave and a haircut on the on the the metal that is bulged out, and then I, I shout to it with my hands cupped over it. Move back! <laughs> see, see! You hear a muffled voice from within. And uh, then I'll I'll move away and kind of with a you know a big arm gesture be like, go ahead. I will blow a hole in the wall with my handy dandy bow. Which uh, arrow would you cool. Which arrow would you like to use? Well, incidentally, I assume the incendiary, or would, since we're dealing with giant metal, would I razor tip penetrate cut? Or how <laughs> would I get through this giant reinforced steel? In you, could either, you, you could either use the thermal or the bludgeoning arrow. The bludgeoning arrow would basically knock it down. The thermal would blow it up. 
I guess we'll knock it down. That seems a little bit safer. Okay. <clears throat> so the uh, your arrows do damage at 10. Your accuracy, I think, is 10 or 11. Um, the difficulty of a, sh of a shot with your telescopic vision is zero. So you're at plus 11, which is an automatic red result, which means you do eight times damage. This is a trivial task for Arbalist. So you don't even need to roll unless you'd like to. And um, your arrow shoots out into the thing. The steel plate collapses inward as if it's been hit by a battering ram. And um, your repeating crossbow has already got another arrow ready to go. The metal collapses inward. And um, the guy inside goes, oh, thank God. And he comes running out uh, desperately. Down. Okay. You're already there. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, ah, ah, ah. And then he realizes it's just water. <laughs> well, not quite just water. It's, you know, foam and such like that. Those things. Yes, but he's not being hurt. Yes. Uh, it's, cold. <laughs> it's very cold, though. Oh, th th see, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Apollo points the machine gun at him and says, uh, uh, says, there. Starts Ye directing him to the tent w with the machine gun in case he hulks out. No shoot! No shoot! Okay, he goes running to the tent. Oh, si, sí, senor. Uh, hola, adios, gracias, de nada, uh, vaya con Dios. Gra gracias! 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 Uh, All right, now, so what's banging on the barricade? <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, uh, you're now, you've now seen that um, uh, he has barricaded the, uh, the door here um, with a bunch of cleaning supplies, wooden shelving, uh, step ladder, things like that. Um, won't be hard for you guys to move it aside if you'd like, and uh, you can enter the facility that way. Well, I assume we kind of should, or at the very least, like, reinforce it and not let zombies out, one or the other, so. We have an opening. Why don't we just use it, Jude says, and she just uh, runs in and starts taking it apart. <laughs> okay. okay. So, <laughs> I'm going to take it apart. I'll just be, like, waiting to shoot whatever is on the other side. Okay. And so it's a five-minute effort to take it apart, which means that Jude gets it, gets it done in three seconds, and okay. so um, it's done. Okay, um, uh, the, the rest of mine are uh, over there going, where are all the donuts? I thought she was going to save us all. <laughs> uh, I have combat sense, by the way. What does that mean? Uh, that means that anytime someone tries to attack you, you use your combat sense instead of your agility or valor for your defense. Oh, awesome. makes, you much, makes you much harder to hit. Essentially, you can predict the attacks are coming before they come. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and climb through the hole that Arbalist has uh, done for us, and apparently Jude is already in there. Uh, flash mobbing it. Okay, you stride in looking all cool, dust kicks up behind you, and uh, you know, one of the flash mob guys has got the fan blowing to make you look awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay. I've got okay, off flash screen mob. dupes. Per perhaps we should bring the crew under control. We're dealing with unknown substances, and I don't want you exposing uh, Jimmy, Ted, and Al to unnecessary uh, danger. Uh. She, this one, uh, with this one that's been doing all the camera work has the, you know, the hottie beret and all that, and uh, <laughs> I love they have different personalities. And, and the cigarette, and goes, we are missing cinematics. We we cannot miss the cinematics, and just waves the cigarette around. Hazard pay. If you'll uh, sign off on it, they're good. Let's uh, go. Hazard pay. Yes. Uh, I, I just want to scry to the other side of that door and just see what's about to jump us if we open it. Okay. Of course, the last so, probably did that by now. <laughs> yep. when, you, when you scry to the other side of the door, you see that the commotion or, or something has attracted uh, the attention of five of the hideous cancer zombies that you spotted earlier. Um, they seem to have just exited uh, via this doorway... Uh, if you see the green hallway, um, that is just near the orange staircase, they have come through that hallway there, and, uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. They've come through the blue hallway here. Yes, the blue hallway. Uh, they've just come through that, are rounding the corner, and there are five of them. They are definitely heading your direction as if they know you're there. Okay. I will point out right now that Jude only has the gas mask 
and the gloves, not the booties. But, you know, she put she put nitrile gloves on and has the gas mask on, and she has none of the rest of the gear. It all bogs her down, and she gets all uncomfortable. Um, but Apollo's going to come up, and uh, so Apollo and Jude are ready to, for combat at this point. Okay. Do you okay. guys want to do you guys want to move out and and start some combat? Uh, the two I, of them yes. want to. Basically, when everybody else gets here, what took you so long? Let us all roll initiative. You're going to roll one d ten and add your initiative stat. I got a four. Total. I got of a four? six. I uh, total of four. Where oh, do we? I'm sorry, I got a sixteen. Correction, sixteen. Oh, there we go. Okay, I got a thirteen. 12. No, 12. Okay, so Flash Mob is at 16. Uh, Arbalist is at 12. Taro is at 4. So, uh, in a shocking turn of events, Flash Mob is the first to act. So, Flash Mob, uh, you are looking down a corridor. Uh, you see five of these um, cadavers. Uh, these don't look to have yet been autopsied, so their rib cages are still closed, but they have the same. Horrific buboes and boils and pussy blisters that you heard described by your friend Taro. They are, if anything, worse in person than your imagination led you to believe they would be. Okay. Let me add one qualifier to that. Their rib cages are closed for now. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Correct. So, um, like I said, Jude and Apollo were already in there, so Jude's going to run, uh, run forward. And from behind one of them, you, using the gloves, uh, shove it forward towards the gunfire. And basically shoving them into the gunfire wherever Apollo is aiming. And Apollo oh, is okay. going to shoot them. So I, I don't know if you noticed, your character can actually do a concussive boom just by moving so fast that she deals damage. Mm -hmm. It's your strike power. That's my initial. Uh, so that's what she's going to be doing is the concussive strike. And how it's manifesting is she's going and she's slamming people and she's slamming people left and right. And the Apollo okay. is, you know, adding to the flavor of it by shooting right into it. So so you want to do a team attack with yes. your two characters? Yes, okay. I would. So you're doing a team attack, so that will give you plus one to your action value. Okay. So um, you can choose a normal, fast, or power attack, which works just like in D20. Fast attack is a little bit more accurate. Power attack is more damage penalty to hit. So your, your choice of which one you'd like to do. I'm going with power. Power. Okay, so what's your AV action value? My action value for concussive strike... Oh, wait, no. Where would I find action value on my character sheet? Should be down in the bottom right. You'll ah, see... Found uh, it. Ten. Okay, so it's ten. Oh, uh, so power strike is nine. Okay, nine. So then there's two of you, which makes it brings it back up to ten. Okay. Um, the uh, zombies have a valor of only five, so you okay. are at plus... Five, but you want to attack all. You want to attack all of them, I assume. Uh huh. Yes, I do. And I rolled oh. an eleven. Wow. Okay. So attacking all of them gives you a minus two penalty. So you're at a plus three bonus. Okay. Attacking with an eleven uh -huh. gives you an orange result. Orange. Cool. Not bad. So how much? How much damage do you do on an orange result? Um, on an orange result, it shows. Uh, am I reading this right? 768? You're reading that right. Okay, I do 768. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, okay, so they are going to roll with the blow, which is, which is a tactic you can use to reduce the amount of damage you've just taken. And in exchange for reducing the damage, it, um, it causes you to take a condition like being staggered or dazed or stunned. So uh, all five of the zombies are going to uh, reduce the damage um, by three steps. So they will take that damage down from 768 to 96 points. Um, sadly, that is not enough to save their lives because they only have a health of 60. So um, your character, just as the fight begins, goes <laughs> blitzes out around them. Um, and uh, there is a sickening series of sonic booms. Um, and their flesh and bone are absolutely pulverized by the concussive force, which splatters all over Apollo. And their skeletons kind of, you know, stand there for just a second more than anything yeah, else before that's exactly it correct. drops. All the flesh and, slows, slows off, and then... And Apollo goes and just wipes that off. Like, hose you know. crew! We need the hose crew in here! <laughs> From where you are... 
um, since you've moved out to engage them, you see that there are an additional 16 zombies uh, approaching down the hallway to your right. Okay, so okay. you still have two duplicates that haven't acted. The other two duplicates will wait. Um, they're coming up, but they're not going to jump the gun. So I'll let the other two act, then take those two characters' actions. All right, so you're holding. Then you can blow the, everyone else up again. Okay, Arbalist, you're up. Now, how big of an explosion does my incendiary thermal blast arrow do? By default, it only targets one character, but you can multi-attack to blow up a bunch of them if you'd like. I guess I will just do that then. I will multi-blast as many as I can. Okay, and... so there are 16 coming, so that's a minus four penalty if you'd like to multi-blast all of them. And how are we getting the, the negatives for uh, the, the number? Sure, I'll share the little chart with you one sec. So since the game is logarithmic, it's actually really easy. Um, because it just proceeds on logarithmic scale. It's kind of why I was asking is because I figured that and figured <laughs> it would be easy and awesome. Yep, so there you go. Well, all right, I will do that and blast them all. What do I do? All right, what is your action value? Okay. Where you're a shot. Where do I find action value? Bottom right Bottom hand right. should it list all of your attacks. Okay, well, my... Fast ranged attack or power? Okay, that would be... Your choice. Fast range, standard ranged, or power range, depending if you want to focus on accuracy or damage. Since I'm taking a minus four and I've never done this before, let's do fast ranged and get a higher AV value. That has 12. So your AV is 12, minus four is eight. Their valor, or their agility rather, is five. So you're at plus three bonus. So roll 1d100 and look at the plus three version of the chart. All right, 1d100. Mm -hmm. uh, 52. Okay. And, 50. So, so, and then what do I add to it, or what do I do with it? You don't need to add anything. So you did, you, you were at 12, minus 4, 8. I'm at 5, so you're at the 3 column. 8 minus 5 is 3. All right, you rolled a 52, so you got a yellow result on the chart. All right. That being the chart he's referring to. Yes, okay. the challenge I have action seen that chart. That is challenge good to know. action resolution table or chart. Okay, so a yellow result. Um, what is your damage from your fast attack on yellow? Ninety six. Okay, so uh, that is a pretty good hit. However, you do suffer a penalty to that because of the amount that you are attacking. Um, okay, so you then shift down on a little chart that I've got here by some points. So you have wounded every single one of the sixteen zombies. Um, each of them, uh, your each of them is uh, uh, has a burning arrow pierced into it. Um, cancerous pus is leaking out, and the flesh is blackening around the burn, but not enough to kill them all. Yay! Okay, so uh, next up is actually my zombies. And so they are going to descend upon and attack. Uh, so they come rushing forward. We will put seven zombies attacking uh, Jude and Apollo. Uh, so I have projectable force field. Am I able to, at this time, uh, claim that they are under protection? Or is Jude just too fast in this? Yes, you haven't acted yet, so they rushed out before you were ready. Okay, am I able to use the hero points or whatever we're calling them in the system to uh, get that up? You could do so. It would cost 10 hero points to interrupt another action and do that. I'll let you t suck it up. All right, you're going to let you suck it up. Here it is. Okay, so team attack number one. I've got seven zombies. I'm attacking at three. Uh, and so, uh, which a plus three bonus. So my valor is five plus three. I'm at eight. Uh, Jude, what is your Valor? Or Valor plus Super Speed, rather. Valor is 5 Super Speed. Um, I believe I have a 5 Super Speed. Yes, oh. Okay. Um, so it says I have a base 24, 25. Uh, is it the Net SP is what I'm talking about? Yeah, Net SP. That'd be 5, so uh, Valor plus Super Speed is 10. 
Okay, so I'm at 8 to 10. So that's with seven zombies trying to attack Apollo. So here I go. So I'm at minus two penalty on the chart. Uh, I rolled a 38. Okay, so despite seven zombies clawing at Apollo, he is easily able to dodge out of the way with his super speed. Another seven zombies descend upon Jude. Hey, Jude! And uh, a 56 is an even worse roll. So uh, you find them trivially easy to dodge right now. Okay. Awesome. Uh, it is now uh, Taro's turn. Okay. Um, well, how who met, how many who many uh, how many folks can I get in a projectable force field? Um, normally, you would get one, but you could do a multi attack, and then they'll have less protection based on the people you protect. Okay. Well, since Jude seems to be our melee individual, I will go ahead and throw the projectable force field up around them. Is that my entire action, or do I get to uh, assault as well? So that uses an automatic action to project it onto allies. Each round, you get a movement action, an automatic action, and a challenge action. So uh, your automatic action is project the force field onto your friends. So those two are now protected. Uh, then you can do a move and an attack. Okay, uh, then I um, I am going to see how these guys respond to mind blasts. Okay, go for um, it. Uh, Apollo is standing closer to us. I'm going to take this, uh, just try and bring uh, the overwhelming might of my mind uh, to uh, the seven that are on him, which looks like it's going to be a neg three. Okay, there it is. What is your AV for a mind blast? The AV, I'm going to just go with a normal one, not a power and not a fast. And so that's an AV of 10, so I'm now at a 7, correct? Yes. All right, their resolve is 5, so you're going to have a plus 2 bonus. Now at this point, let's introduce the hero point rules. You can, if you'd like, spend hero points to increase the roll. The maximum number of hero points you can spend to increase your resolution value is one-third of your resolve. So if you have a resolve of six, you can spend two hero points on any given roll. If you have a resolve of nine, you can spend three. Uh, and those like. are, are used to basically give us a, up our RV rate. Correct. They shift you right up on the chart. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm good with, uh, with what I've got. We'll, we'll see how it works. Okay. You're at plus two. Okay. And I've got 52 at plus two. Oh, worst result I can do and still claim a hit. That's green. All right. What's your green damage? Green damage on a psychic is 96. 96. Okay. So uh, after the reduction for team attack, for multi attack, it does 32. And so that is um, not enough to. Uh, overwhelm them into a stunned state. Uh, the zombies seem momentarily confused and a little bit disoriented, um, but then they regain their innate hatred of all living creatures and uh, their red glowing eyes glower at you further. Okay, so um, Taro has gone. Hang on yep. one sec. Sure thing. Okay, we still have two speedsters who haven't acted. Yes, so first speedster, uh, Maria, uh, she is going to uh, go into the room, um, and she is, so you, we have a total of 14 of these zombies, right? Yes, okay. in two groups of seven right now, yeah. Great, so she's going to go to, uh, uh, she's going to go concussive blast, concussive strike, the, uh, the far group, because I have a plan okay. to help, uh, help uh, Arbalist on the other group. Okay. So, uh, that is going to be a miss, though. That's an 80. All right. So what's your... Well, well let's find out if it's a miss. What's your uh, AV? Um, my AV on the fast strike for her, because that's what she was doing was fast strike, uh, AV is 11. Okay. So the difficulty value is 5, which is, gives you a plus 6, but you're doing it against an attack against 7 of them, so which brings it down to plus 3. Uh, so on the RV column, an 80 you said you rolled? Yep, 80. So I guess that's green. Wow. Yep, you got a green result. Okay. So uh, so what's your green damage? Uh, for fast strike on green, it's 128. Oh. Are you sure it's 128? It says... For 90. fast strike? That's That surprises me too, because it says concussive strike is 96, then fast strike 128, and power strike 192. Should the... Should fast strike and concussive strike be switched? 
Oh, yeah, it looks like I made a typo. So okay. you should be doing 96 on your base, 128 on your power, 64 on your fat. Okay, um, I only have read write, so if you don't mind adjusting those to the correct number, that way I have it. Oh, of Thank course. You. Thank you so much. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No sorry. problem. Just give Terrible. me the correct numbers. No, Terrible, no problem. Terrible, embarrassing error. Okay, <laughs> so uh, a green result is not enough to take guys out. Okay. Um, they are... Uh, now, however, all seriously wounded um, because they'd also all been burned. Okay, cool. So, and the so. other one will come up and uh, is there a way that I can basically utilize my super speed to corral them, to create, make, put them into, you know, a tighter bundle of guys? Um... To, to what end? What are you trying to achieve? There probably is a way to do it. I just, I need to They're know mechanically. They're grouping. I want to basically make it so that the next shell that Arbalist throws at them is going to hit all of them. Ah, uh, okay. So Arbalist's thermal shells are their, their single target, and then he multi-attacks. So uh -huh. getting them close together would, wouldn't help him unless he was power stunting specifically to do an explosion. Um, which he I'll could do. do. Now, would it be part of a team attack that uh, they might be able to benefit on? Now, that's right. Now, another way to do it would be to say she's doing a team attack, okay. so she's reserving her action to team attack yeah. to then help so him. I'll, yeah. So I'll just concussive strike the second group as well, the cl because the closed group is what my team can get to. Uh, this time I got an 18. So that ah, is going okay. to be... Um, that's an so orange. Plus three, it's an orange, yes. So okay. orange... Uh, on a fast strike, because when they were, they were acting solo, 512 is what my number says. I don't know if that's accurate or if you need to correct it. I have not yet fixed okay. this. Hang on one sec. Sure thing. Whatever number that you end up putting into that is what she did. Okay. One ninety two it is. I did one ninety two. That is a very effective amount of damage. Um, so they are going to... One, two, three for that. Okay, so now they've taken 16, 16. Okay, so they roll with the attack. Um, they are now all overwhelmed. So those seven will not be able to act on their next panel. They're staggered by your concussive boom. Flesh has been blasted off of them. Um, they have 10 health left. Okay. Next, okay, so uh, anyway, your character sheet's been updated now. I hope that that, um, I hope that shows the data. So yep. it's, a it's a manual character I sheet, so I had to do it by hand, yeah. Yeah, Brandon's, I think, offering you to do the math for you later. Oh, yeah. no, there, there is a way to do it auto automatically multiply. It's just two, 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 each step of the way. Yeah. But, yeah. It's I, I, I do character sheets or other. I, I like playing around with Excel. Oh, uh, right on, right on. Yeah, this is just something we threw together. Okay, um, well, that is everyone's action, so we're going to roll an initi initiative for the next round. Let's hope for another one. Ooh, I got to two. I go on five now. Ooh, very exciting. Fourteen. Nice. I think Plus somebody's 12. cheating. I think both of them are cheating. I add ten. <laughs> she is a speedster. I do okay. add ten. It's true, it's true. All right, so I have a new entrant into the battle. And we will roll for him. Very exciting. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, okay. All right, so on initiative 19, a voice comes over the intercom, and he says, uh, he says, You are doing better than I would have expected for multi-celled organisms. But you will not prevail. So we're fighting a giant cancer cell. <laughs> he says, you've not even yet begun to fight me. All right. That was my action on 19. We go to 16. Sorry, 14, which is the speedster. Okay. Flash yep. mob. Jude says, don't worry, doctor. Uh, Dr. Westminster, we'll get you. We'll fix you. Um, and Jude is going to concuss a boom the... Uh, through the two groups again this time, running back towards the party. So all 14? All 14 is her attempt, yes. Wow, okay. So you're going to be an RV plus one. Do you want to spend any hero points? Um, 
let's see. No, she's she um she does she's going to uh, oh I I can do my other characters. Apollo, by the way, is basically he's he's taking the gun, the machine gun, and he's like batting them off, you know, like a baton kind of bear, um mm-hmm. and such. And he's going to basically be shoving them into the line of fire. Of, so he's uh, team know, attacking. Okay. Yes, he's Got team it. attacking. And uh, I put Maria in the back group. So Maria is going to be team attacking as well. Maria is going to uh, rev up a concussive uh, strike with her. So I'm going to be doing a power strike this time since I'm doing a team attack. instead. Of okay, so you've, got, so you've got everybody's team attacking, which is going to except, increase your team attack. Except for Alice. I've got two characters coming and helping. Okay, got it. Okay. So then you will get a plus one bonus from the team attack, minus four for the multi-attack, so you're at an overall minus three. Okay. You're attacking at a ten, minus three is a seven to my five, so you're at plus two. Plus two. Okay. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven on a plus two is a yellow. Uh, it is a yellow result. Okay, and what's your base damage? Two hundred. Or your yellow damage, rather? Two hundred and fifty-six yeah, for power? damage. Oh, that's that's really brutal. Two fifty six. Yep. Okay. So one, two, three. After the team attack. <laughs> All right. So um, the seven that were already badly damaged from the prior attacks explode in a shower of gore that sprays all over um, the speedsters. The flash mob is running red with the slaughter. Uh, the seven that had been damaged only by the arrows. Um, are badly battered and uh, seem somewhat dazed by the attack. So they have rolled with the attack. They're dazed. They lose their um, movement action this round. Uh, and you're, So your three characters have acted. Did you want to do an action with your fourth character? Uh, I am going to be holding for the rest of my party at this point on that one. Quick question. Okay. I have some drawbacks. And in my drawbacks, uh, as far as I can tell, they, it only happens if I'm taking damage, correct? Yeah, what's your drawback? Uh, well, I've got a drawback of susceptibility to electrical, ionizing, neural, or toxic damage. And I would say these count as toxic. So if you want to say that I'm getting irradiated with this and having issues, and I, I'm totally good with that on Jude. The other ones are fully protected, but Jude is not at the moment. Uh, okay, got it. Um, so they have not yet done toxic damage to you. Right now they're doing bludgeoning damage. Okay. Um, it's possible they may have some toxic attacks, but they haven't used them if so. Okay. Okay, um, so who's up next? It is Arbalest. I'll just repeat. I'm going to shoot them all at, with my incendiary blast because they're almost dead. Okay, so you're shooting my at... Size, I should have been tangle shot at them. I was just hoping I could kill them all in one shot like she did because I don't like being shown up by you. Well, to be fair, there were four of her. Okay, <laughs> so... Um, so you're, at a, you're doing a team attack on seven guys. So that's a minus three penalty. What's your action value? My action value, I'll do a fast ranged attack again, so 12. So minus three is nine. So you're at a plus four against my five. All right. And I roll 49. 49 is an orange result. And what's your damage? My orange result is 192. That is a lot of damage. One, two, three. Okay. So... Um, This time, you're not messing around, and uh, you unleash a spread of crossbow bolts in rapid fire, cranking your arbalist, your telescopic vision, guiding you in perfectly on each shot, hitting into them, and then the the napalm coating on the arrows detonating, and they just go up like those screaming victims you see in Vietnam War movies, and then they topple over. All righty, then. Because if we're fighting cancer embodied... Uh, we should burn it all to the ground. That's my thoughts. <laughs> okay. Uh, Taro, you're up. Uh, and all the all the zombie things in front of us are, are gone at the moment, correct? All of the visible zombies are gone, correct. Okay. Well, um, I, I am going to go ahead and... Uh, Scan that stairwell, the the top of the stairwell, basically, since one of our primary missions is to get to level two. Ah, very good. Okay, so um, when you scan the top of the stairwell, 
you see what looks at first like a dog. But on closer look, you realize it's the cadaver of a dog that's been autopsied and then injected with whatever is causing this problem. And um, it is hideously mutated. Uh, the dog is uh, uh, panting out pus from its uh, a lengthened tongue. Its eyes are bulbous. Its flesh is rotting. And um, it seems to be sniffing at the air. Oh, God, that's horrific. <laughs> 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 I was just like keeping my mouth shut until Alex took note by himself. And why would you do that to Ragnarok, Brandon? I, I heard he was doing it to my poor Ragnarok. This is my my super dog that uh, Alex GM'd a game for last summer. On oh Facebook. yay! So that was my cosplay that I would break out. All I right. have a le I have a levity over there. If he shows up, I'll break him in. <laughs> um. There's some sort of mut mutated dog at the top of the stairs. Be careful, whoever goes through first. Uh, okay. Flash mob. I, have a, <laughs> I have a question. Yes. For our approach, no, for, for, for my team. Something just talked to us. So we're fighting an intelligent something. Oh, that's probably Dr. Are Charles we Wesley trying to keep this thing alive to interrogate the something? Or should we assume that this is cancer given flesh and intel given intelligence and shoot to kill whatever we see? Are, are, uh, which approach are we taking here? Maria will say, like you said, I, I concur that it's probably Dr. Charles Westminster, but, and she, like, whenever Maria talks, you know, I'm extra slow, like you guys can't follow, <laughs> you know, I'm speaking a little <laughs> bit slower. Uh, and... and <laughs> The doctor from the CDC did ask us to save the doctor, so maybe we can just hose him down and they can take whatever is cancer out of him. Uh, now, so Apollo, says, to be clear, she doesn't want you to hose him down with your gun. Oh, did Rihanna send you? The voice over the intercom says... Where she wants to save me? Where was she when my wife was dying of cancer and they refused the treatments to her? See, I totally called that he was not... <laughs> we, we totally called this Probably scenario. trying her best to help you, I'm guessing. Through the no. emotional turmoil. She was as worthless as the rest of you. And, by the way, like I said, Jude's already taken off, off uh, towards the staircase already. <laughs> Okay, so Jude is running towards the staircase as it happened. And um, so Jude, from the uh, green room, which is right near the staircase, as you can see it on the map, um, you are shocked as something much larger than the zombies you fought so far staggers out. Um, it looks like perhaps another stage in the evolution as the human form is gradually giving way to a blob-like form of pustules um, that reminds you of something from an old movie called Akira. And the, uh, the thing lurches out towards you and gives out a spray of hideous toxic pus. Brandon, I just yeah. have a question right now. Do you think this guy was a hockey player before he died? been thinking about cancer stick this whole time okay sorry wow. about that alex all right so what is your agility uh sorry your agility or parkour if you have the parkour skills I do. Since you're moving. okay and then uh, what is your parkour my parkour is 10 oh christ okay and your um and your super speed is five yes my super speed is five Okay, so that means in melee, the chance, your difficulty to hit you is 10, but when you're moving at super speed, the difficulty to hit you with a ranged attack is 15. So that's quite hard. Because I'm bouncing uh, I, up the walls uh, over. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have marksmanship 10 on my super cancer zombie. So if, I had, if, uh, if we were in melee, it would be a, a 10 to 10 zero odds, but uh, because I am using my ranged toxic rapid fire blast, I'm only at a 10. So I'm at minus five to hit you. All right, well, we're going to give this a shot. Chances aren't very oh, good on that kind of chart. Wow. Though. I rolled an O1. Oh, wow. Alt one. That's an orange. That is an orange result. That well, is 
Savage. To, to be fair, this is Jude. She's not protected, and she and I am vulnerable to toxic damage. That is double. How excited plus. you are to have your weakness exposed. That is double <laughs> plus ungood for you. Um, so your weakness to toxic damage is a six SP weakness. Holy crap! Yeah. Okay, so Did she just that get knocked means. Out? Uh, knocked out. You just took 2,048 points of damage. Uh, you can roll with the blow to reduce it to 512. <laughs> however, you, however you'd like to cut it, you did not get knocked out. You got dissolved into goo. Jude is gone. Okay. Is that permanent or did she just get reabsorbed? Uh, it is permanent for the session. Uh, okay. Later, you could bring her back. Okay. Um, you guys oh. hear Alice scream in pain. And a voice over the intercom says, one down. <clears throat> okay. So, so, um, we're assuming he's on the second floor. Uh, yes, he's, he seems to be, he seems to be somewhere where he can operate a, an intercom system. Oh, so you're what's not sure. between us and the second floor right now? Uh, a the super cancer zombie, and then at the top of the steps is um, the uh, cancer hound. Okay, and where are we on the map specifically? Can you I guys, know? other than other than dead Jude, you guys are um, to the east of main autopsy, uh, close correct. to the upper yeah. corner, upper right yeah. corner, upper right corner. You're, what, you're in the orange right hallway corner of by main autopsy. Yeah, the orange corridor to the east of main autopsy that runs. Orange yeah. corridor to the east. So the side that has less writing. Right. The side okay. of the map. The green side rather than the blue side. The green side. North of the orange stairs, basically. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to shoot a hole in the ceiling. Hi, Eve. Please go. I'm going to shoot a hole in the ceiling. That is super clever. Okay. Um, Using well. my... Uh, last time, we, I just... I knocked down a giant metal outer door thing, so I figure this shouldn't be hard to just bludgeon shot it through. Um, no, not at all. So, uh, to give you a sense of perspective, um, an M1A2 tank gun is a power level of about 11 or 12. So, for your crossbow to have a power level of 10, you're striking with about the force of a 105 millimeter howitzer, 88 German flak gun. So, um, it is absolutely no issue to blow a hole in the ceiling with that thing. So you just crank it and a massive hole erupts. And Apollo's and... aiming into that hole in case anything comes out. Apollo likes to back our ballista. Now I grabbed uh, grapple guns. I don't know if anyone else did or if it's an action required to throw them to people or what do I have to do to set up a grapple so we can just climb up to the next floor. But that, that would be my intent after shooting. Okay, so using the grapple gun is an automatic action. So you basically, um, you know, you fire the, the arbalist with one hand, and then with the other hand, you fire your grapple gun. The swing line shoots up. So you can see that um, you are directly beneath what used to be a library. You can see the bookshelves um, and filing cabinets up here in the northeast corner. Um, some of those just fell onto the floor where you blasted through them. And um, so you are grappled into that destination. All right. Now, uh, obvious, I don't know how much we're allowed to, you know, talk like we couldn't in an actual fight with a giant cancer zombie, but I've got ranged bombs, and I also have an infiltration skill, so I'm planning to just go hunt him down. If you guys want to come up with me, great. If not, I'll just hunt him down, but, but I'm playing the most dangerous game now, and I'll try not to kill him. Um, okay. Apollo will say, uh, I can help you scout out. I got your six. All we right. Need, we need guards left here to make certain that nothing gets out. Uh, Alice and Maria says, uh, yeah, we got that covered. You two go. Okay. So, um, why don't we start? By the way, if you want to scry and find where he is and just walkie talkie it to me, that would save me time, but you know. I'll t I'll be taking a look. Um, so yeah, I can hang out here while they they run off and do that. 
Okay, if you okay. hang out, then Maria's gonna go with um go as well, and therefore Alice and uh, Tara will stay. And and you see, basically, Alice is you know tearing up, and she doesn't she's uh in pain at the moment. Right, right. All right, so let me see if I understand correctly. Arbalist and uh, Alice and Maria are going upstairs. No, Jude and uh, sorry, uh, Apollo and Maria are going upstairs. Apollo and Maria are yes. going upstairs with Arbalist. Jude's everywhere. <laughs> Jude, Jude is, is everywhere. everywhere. Jude's dead right. at the moment. Um, hey, Jude, don't be afraid. <laughs> you just blew up and you are covering the walls. <laughs> Remember. All right. Um, so uh, this, this is what she gets for running off everywhere. She this absolutely. is not the first time it's happened, and Alice always ends up suffering the pain of it. It's it's very sad. Okay, so meanwhile, Taro is staying back in the uh, in in the room where you guys first entered to use surveillance and communicate that via walkie-talkie, and um, Alice is staying with Taro. Yes. Okay. So um, so we're gonna have two things happening at once here because. Um, the super cancer zombie is now lumbering down the hall uh, towards those of you on the first floor. Okay. And up on the second floor, there are some other creatures approaching. So why don't we roll initiative for everybody involved? Um, so uh, because you guys are split up into two locations, please roll separately for the initiative for your duplicates that are on the bottom floor and the top floor. Absolutely. All right, I got a seven. Top floor is going on an 11. Bottom floor is going on a 17. Okay, one sec, one sec. Sure thing. All right, super zombie. Ooh. Found. And that's where, you know, eager to expose my weakness. I had that weakness and I realized it applied, so I thought that I should fess up <laughs> and see how it works. And now you know. Now okay. I know. So, uh, the highest you guys got was a 17? Uh-huh. All right. And then Arbalist, you had a what? Seven. And Taro? I have a seven as well. Ooh, bad, bad initiative rolls, guys. Okay. Um, well, sadly, the super zombie is first with a 19. So it comes lumbering down the hall in all of its hideousness. Alice is right there, and so it is going to spew on her. Okay. Attacking. Now, Alice, you aren't moving right now, so you right. only are at 10 instead of 15. Okay. All right. Do you want to use any hero points on defense? Um, it would be 10 hero points to defend? No, no. So you can use hero points to, to decrease my, re my result resolution value, just okay. like you can use them to increase. And you, what's your resolve on your character? Um, my resolve is a 5. Okay, so you can spend up to 2 hero points if you'd like. I will spend two hero points. Okay. Alice so ten to, 10 to 10 makes it zero, but Alice spends two hero points of 15. So now I'm at minus two. Okay, here we go. Big roll. Wow, it is not your day. Uh, I got an 08. That is a yellow. Re that Ooh. is going to be really ungood for you. Uh, is Alice protected by the projected force field? She is. Ah, okay. Uh, oh, projected force field. I don't know. I'm protected by the protective gear that we were able to get. Correct. Alice is the one that's with me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, then she would be because she's really the only target that I've got. And she's okay. wearing gloves, a hairnet, and booties. So <laughs> And the mask and just, you know, full hazmat with the with the gear on the outside and such. All right. So um, that force field saves your life because uh, without it, you would have just taken another 512 points of damage. Um, but the force field is not susceptible to toxic damage. Um, and so uh, you are dazed by the attack. You will lose uh, your movement action this round, but you take no damage. Okay. Uh, as I see it come up against me and I'm like freaking out. And uh, as it gets to about here, it stops and splatters. That is exactly Ooh. what just happened, yes. And so now I'm looking at that force field of green goop dripping down and that's what I'm dazed by. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so that was my super zombie. Speedster uh, 17 is up. Okay, that's actually Alice. So Alice can't uh, does not have a move action, but as she looks at this, and then she uh, takes her gun, she points it at the thing, and then um, and she will let it loose, let the submachine gun loose on full auto. All right. So you use your um, 
Agility. Okay. Doing full auto, you can either increase your chance to hit by two or your damage by two. Uh, let's go with damage by two. She is like, you know, she's Ramboing at the moment. All right. So your um, your agility uh, five, Woo! but you can use you can use super speed and add that in to make it ten. Uh, my agility of my super cancer zombie is five. So you're at plus five. Um, ought three because apparently oh, I want my revenge. Wow. <laughs> that was crazy. Okay. I don't so know that what a gun is does, a, I don't have the info. Uh, the gun is damage 7. Okay. So that okay. it will do uh, base damage 24. You're doing 192 on a red result. Nice. That That is pretty nasty. Um, so let's see. Oh, and you did, uh, you did the damage, didn't you? Yes, plus 2 damage is what I chose. Mm. Okay, so that's actually going to take it up to 384. Full Rambo. Wow. Ah! I'm screaming. Wow. Okay. So I have physical vulnerability 10. So I, I blocked uh, 64 of that. So 320 gets through. And my health is 320. Okay. Incredible. That red result was what you need, Dallas. So um, uh, you unleash and just empty the clip of uh, 10 millimeter rounds blasting into this thing. And uh, it staggers back, it staggers back, and then it just falls over with a sickening sound revenge okay it doesn't look to be dead it's still kind of heaving and half breathing but it's unconscious at least okay okay um 16 15 14 13 12 11 11 upstairs okay so upstairs you're up on 11 um there are two count cancer hounds uh running towards you at full speed right now okay um I am at this point not going to be engaging those two because right now I'm trying to scout the situation. So okay. I zoom all over the place uh, trying to basically see as much as I can with those actions. Ah, so you're just going to move, use your movement action to just zoom around. Okay. Zoom around with those so two. What you see is that in the blue area, there are 15 more of the cancer zombies and five cancer hounds. Ooh, okay. Um, uh you see that there are two more of the cancer, cancer hounds down by the stairs, um, and there are five cancer hounds and two cancer zombies um, up in the orange west-east corridor. So there are a lot of bad guys up in this area. Um, okay. You did not go into uh, you did not go into the sealed histology toxicology lab. Um, the doors were sealed and closed. Okay, I'm uh, going to. Um, Maria is up here, so Maria will uh, walkie-talkie down to everyone and give them the numbers and Apollo will uh, walkie talkie and say, I'm luring some downstairs. <clears throat> and uh, Apollo is going to uh, basically end his Zerg by dropping back down to the first floor, but he's, um, and uh, is going to start working on a barricade. So that's going to be my action at this point. Okay. okay. So he moves and then you take an extended action. So you're able to get about five minutes worth of barricade building up okay. uh, done in just a few seconds. And I'm okay. coming down using the stairs because, like I said, I, I want to be trying to lure a couple of them into a choke point where we can beat them up. Okay. okay. So you're going to lure the people into a choke point, but you verified he's probably in the toxicology lab because mm -hmm. that's locked down and you looked everywhere else. Yes. So yep. Could we get some scrying and, in and, that? Mm -hmm. before, before we go there, I'm also at 11 with my cancer hounds. Okay. So two of the cancer hounds are going to follow your lead, and they were down by the steps in the first place, so you're right there, and they're coming at you. Yep. All but right. at this point, I'm a 15 against them. Well, they're going to attack you in melee. They don't have the toxic spray, so oh, they're okay. going to attack you in melee. So you're a 10. I'm a 10. All right. Uh, I'll, I'm take, a I'll spend two hero, hero points. You, I'm only a five with my cancer hound, so I don't oh. know if you want to do that. Nah, I will. I'll, I'll be at minus five with team attack minus four. Sure, you, then I will and, not And uh, I rolled a 20, which is a good roll, but not good enough for a minus four penalty. So you are just simply too fast for the cancer hounds to be able to menace. Um, they are panting and barking and baying, and um, to you it's all just like a very fun game of fetch. Yep. All right. Um, that's it for the uh, for those two cancer hounds. The other two cancer hounds that are up on this floor, um, sorry, the other five, the three in the blue, two in the orange. Uh, the other two in the orange come bounding forward, um, and they circle and they spot uh, Arbalist. Um, they haven't gotten to him yet. Um, and then the other three come running up to the top of the steps. All right. So uh, 10. 
Nine? Okay, nine is my cancer zombies. So Arbalist, um, five cancer zombies have uh, have approached as well. So you now are confronting five cancer zombies and two cancer hounds up in the library area. Any of Yay. those cancer zombies uh, following the super speeder? Fifteen are following you. Okay, cool. So I'll take care of these guys. You take care of the fifteen, and <laughs> good. We've got a choke point, so hopefully they'll come at us one or two at a time. Yep, that's that's the plan. Okay. Eight, seven. That's me. And and uh, what was your character's name again? I just forgot. Tara. 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 Right, do you want to go first? Go for it. Oh, well, I wanted to know what the difference was between my web shot and my glue shot. Web shot ensnares them so that it's like you've wrestled them into a wrestling hold. Glue shot freezes them in place so they can't move. Now, these zombies did have a toxic blast, so gluing them won't keep me out of range. Um, the None of these are the ones that actually look like cancer cells that are bursting goo. These are still the humanoid or dog-like ones. So you haven't uh, seen any evidence that they spray goo yet. Okay. So I have five of the zombies coming after me, and that was it? There was, I said, you said there was two hounds that were looking at me, but... Yep, five zombies, two hounds coming at you. All right. Since I can group shot, can I in glue shot all of them? Is that... You can, absolutely. All right. Would that still use a, a fast ranged attack numbers or what? Because you have down here... Um... You, you would use your oh, standard. No, no. Yeah, you would use yeah, your... Yeah, should, be, so... should be like well, 11 that... or something, yeah. All okay. right, I'm, I'm going to try and glue shot all of them in place. Okay, there's seven of them. So you're at 11, minus their agility of five, which puts it at a plus six. Seven of them gives you a minus three penalty, so you're at a plus three bonus on the chart. Okay, and there's no damage here, so I just have to, like... The higher you roll, the longer they're stuck. Or the better you roll, the longer they're stuck. Okay. Oh, four! Oh, Christ. Okay, so um, with just remarkable skill, in a matter of seconds, you unleash seven arrows, each of them carrying a fast-acting super glue, and um, it's a red result. The, the two hounds, almost in like mid-leap, um, get caught by the glue, crumple down. The zombies are pacing forward. They get stuck. Uh, you don't think they're going to have a chance to break free for 30 seconds. That's eight combat rounds. So that was very effective. All right. Then okay. if they're stuck, that just used one of my actions, right? I still have, like, move ability. Yep. So I will go and I guess I will go down to the um, that, down the hallway or whatever. I, I want to be there in the back of watching the uh, choke point nest so I can cover my allies in case they need a flank buddy at the top of the stairs. Okay. Or at, least, at the very least, I'll use infiltration to sneak. So I don't right. attract any attention and while I observe what's going on. All right. So you stealth forward down the hallway to the south, and you're just around the corner. Um, you see there's a massive horde of zombies and hounds at the top of the steps, um, and uh, they seem to be in hot pursuit of someone or something. All right. Well, okay. Over to you, Taro. Okay. Uh, what is engaged downstairs with Alice and I, or did we deal with that? Um, there is a super zombie, and you have not yet dealt with it. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do a power mind blast on that. Uh, call over the walkie. Uh, sorry, the... we have not, we haven't oh, gotten I, I a chance to get, uh, any scrying done. We're currently engaged with, uh, well, I think that maybe it still has chunks of Jude all over it, so it's eaten and still hungry. Yes. So this it's currently knocked down. It's taken a lot of damage, um, but it's still breathing. So it's, it's breathing? Here. Yeah. Well, I, it's you know, zero. kind of quivering. Yeah. yeah. We need so it might be talk. regenerating or something, yeah. Go ahead and uh, power mind blast on it. it there you go. Okay. So this is an AV of nine. All right. Sadly, my, uh, my resolve is on five, so you're at plus four. Okay, so I end up with 37, which gives me an orange result. Orange on power is 512. Okay, you have absolutely devastated this thing's uh, psychology. Its determination drops to, you know, a very high negative number, um, and it is not going to be going anywhere. It cannot take any actions. 
Now, is am I able to use my scrying uh, since it does not seem to be using chart? Can I use yeah, that use as my other action? Automatic action, yes. Yeah, that's what the term is. Automatic action. So, yeah, I want to scry that room that they were just asking about. Uh, toxicology, I think I heard. Yep, the toxicology lab. Okay. So, based on what we've seen on on our little uh, screens and such. All right. So, you scry into the toxicology lab, which is, you know, uh, where compound C is supposed to be located. And you wish you hadn't. Because the figure that you see there... Imagine the small, sort of peevish, nerdish head of a scientist attached to uh, a hideous Lovecraftian body horror, malformed shape, uh, dripping with gore and ooze with extra limbs sprouting off in unnatural locations. And in places, the limb, it's like he's pulled back his own flesh to expose sharpened bone as weapons. And um, he's... Uh, he's got strange mouths have formed in portions of his torso that are spewing forth pus. And um, he doesn't seem to sense that you're scrying him. Um, his, his many eyes are closed as if he's in touch with the various creatures. And he's standing, he's standing by an intercom. Oh my, I, I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. This thing, it, it, it's like Octo-Hector from uh, the Green Lantern comic books. Uh, it, uh, basically, it looks like, uh, looks like somebody from the mainland. It's absolutely hideous in its construction. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me he just earned a hero point or something on that one. Obviously. Oh my god, that's hilarious. All right, great. I mean, I made the table laugh a couple of times, but it wasn't as tremendous as that. Yeah, it was, it was pretty tremendous. Okay, um, where, good stuff. where was he in there? Or what uh, spot in the? Do we have like a fix for the exact spot he might be? Yeah, so if you see on the map, you see there's the little purple star, and then there's those ter to the north of the little purple star. He's standing by the terminal. So All right. he's, he's at at the terminal, just uh, just to the north of objective. Yeah. So I just like to point out the combination of what Brandon and I thought of was happening is exactly what happened. Yes. At the beginning. Because <laughs> I'm like, don't worry, he's already turned. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's funny because whenever I watch zombie movies, you know, all the protagonists of zombie movies always act like they're so surprised that it's zombie. <laughs> Do you morons not watch movies? Zombie. <laughs> so, right. But I, I have this, like, running joke that if the zombie apocalypse ever happens, the only people that are going to survive are the tabletop gamers because they're instantly going to be like, they're going to be, they're just going to like tw look at Twitter and they're going to say explosion at a biochemical lab, civil unrest. It's zombies. <laughs> Put plan Z into play. You know? <laughs> yes. Anyway. All right. Um, well, it looks like it's time for initiative as we go into another page. Combat. Woohoo. A new page of comic book. I got a five this time. Nice. Okay. I got a ten. Uh, Maria, who is the only one left upstairs right now, is on a 19. Okay. Everyone else What happened to the other one upstairs? Did you kill another one of you? No, Apollo came downstairs to back you guys up because uh, Apollo just oh, lured okay. 25 mobs towards us. Well, oh, 15 and then us. 5 more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apollo just lured the majority of it downstairs and has a barricade up so that the three of us can, you know, take it down with the barricade up. Fantastic. Sure. Okay. Um, well, 19, you have the initiative. Okay, so Maria is going to be heading over to the uh, that special lab area, histo uh, histology and toxicology. Um, I am going to check the... Uh, what kind of mechanism is keeping it locked closed? Is there, like, a uh, keypad? It is a, It is sealed with a passcode. Okay, like I'm going card. to... Um, I'm going to, oh, I do have a key, we do have the key card, so I'm going to try the key card first. If the key card does not work, then I'm going to try and super speed brute force through the code combinations. He seems to have disabled the key card. Okay, so. then I will super speed and brute force the code. Start typing. Nope. Beep. Oh, wow. Beep. Beep. Okay, so we can actually handle this. So what's your insight? My insight, I believe, is a five. Let me double. I've lost my character sheet panel. I apologize. Uh, oh, I really lost my character sheet panel. I accidentally closed it. I believe it's a five. If not, it's a three. I, I've got it. I've got a copy okay. here. Let's see. Flash mob. Your insight is three. Okay. okay. So that means um, that 
uh, you can, since you're doing what's called an, you're doing what's called an extended action, which is you're using time to accomplish a task. So you add the amount of time. The time is normally zero because it's zero SPs of time, which is one page. But you have super speed, so you get to do it. You actually get five SPs of time. Okay. So you're overall at an action value of three plus five equals eight. Okay. All right. The security of this lock is a seven, so you're at plus one. Okay. Ought four. Gee whiz. Okay. Um, you just kind of come up, and in about three seconds, you've punched in 4,000 combinations, and uh, the door opens. Okay. Um, I walkie-talkie to, uh, well, I wave over to Arbalist and point inside. Okay. So, so which door did she just open? The door to uh, Histology. Yeah, there's, there's a couple different ones, so you can oh. pick which one you want to open. Um, I, uh, I was assuming you did the one in the center yes, to him. Yes, the, the one okay. closest to him. Very good. Okay, so entering the blue area or the dark blue area? The blue area that, um, and it's going to be the one, cl the door that is closest to the star symbol. Okay. So it's going to be the one on the left, and it's the blue area that you just entered. Wonderful. Yeah, very, very middle of the map. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, on 18 is Dr. Westminster. So his action, and so, okay. Um, Dr. Westminster hears the door open, and so with a sickening lurch, stumbles in the direction uh, that you are. And um, from all the way back at the terminals, he just reaches forward to attack, and his body forms extra cells as he reaches out to you, and his arms, which are almost... Um, quick statement. Um, I don't think he's going to be attacking me then, because uh, I was basically to the side of the door. Because I'm not going to be standing in the open doorway. Like I said, I was waving Arbalist through the open door. Uh, well, you did your move action to get to the door. Okay, And then sure. you did your action. So there's that's no fine. way for you to have done that and also... Okay, that's fine. Cool. Then he's attacking me. Bring it. He, he is going to attack you, yes. Awesome. Which, uh, okay. which of my... All right. So I'm going to be attacking you in melee. So I okay. will... My... Uh, martial Arts of 12. Ooh, okay. Martial Arts of 12. Um, well, I have a um, agility of 5, uh, and right now I just stopped moving, so I don't get my super speed. Uh, no, you would use your Valor of 5. Oh, sure. Valor of melee 5. Defense, and plus your super speed. You always get to add the super speed. It's just you have to move to get parked. Oh, okay. All 15. Right. And that's only against, it's only against ranged attacks. So okay. you're at 5 plus 5. No, 5 All plus right. 10. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Plus, 5 plus 5, so 10. Yes. Not All right, so I'm at plus 2 against you. Do you want to use any hero point? Yes. Uh, I will use two hero points. All right, so you're going to bring it down to 0. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm attacking. All right. Let's and I rolled a 60. So that is a green result. I missed. Or sorry, a white a result. White result. So I'm 51 yes. to 100. Okay. However, Dr. Cancer has the extra attack power, so he gets an additional attack, and okay. with his other limb, he comes out at you. And this time, no more Mr. Nice Guy. He also spends two hero points. So bring oh, it back nice. up to plus... Two. He's going to be at plus four now. You wish to spend two to resist? Yes, I'll spend two to resist. All right, so now it's back to plus two. And I got a 70. So that is a green, green. result. Um... And that is 64 points of damage to you. Okay, I am going to take, uh, you know, I want to take stun or something to reduce that. I'll roll with he, it. He only got green, so you can't reduce it any further. That's the oh, damage you can take. Sure. What is your health? Uh, my health is 30 as far as this lists. Oof. Okay. Um, so who was this? Which of your duplicates? This is Maria. All right, so Maria is killed as she is reduced to negative 30. Crunch. Yeah, we, we weren't given any armor in the equipment as far as I could find. <laughs> no, you were not. Yep. You can't really wear any because it would slow you down. Yep. And I ran out of points because duplication and super speed are super. Yeah, no worries. So Maria is You dead. have 30 health? Yeah, I only have 30 health. I, mean, I, I know you. Have health, so I wouldn't have survived that either. Okay, why do I have 320? Am I doing something wrong? <laughs> uh, you've magically augmented your health. Your, your That's health. awesome. Magic <laughs> is the best. Yes, yes. Well, you're a support character, so I made you very defensive. Oh. Help your friend. Maybe you should be here wrestling Dr. Kent. <laughs> 
I got the door open right. for you, Arbalist. It's your Hail Mary now. <laughs> All right. Um, and Arbalist. Alice screams downstairs again. <laughs> okay, Arbalist, you're up. Okay, now, he... Uh, how did he attack um, around, like... Well, I, uh, I, I, he, did, he sent he sent his arms out and he stretched Blendon. So they stretched like around the hallway because I, I thought he was. Uh, he he stepped out from to to look at the door and then stretches. To the door. Okay, so if, you, if you walked up to the doorway, you'd be able to. Okay, so if I walked to the doorway, it's just a clear shot between him and me. Correct. All right, then I am going to just walk up and shoot the man. One okay. on one shot, burn every hero point I can for accuracy. Uh, and. All I'm, right. Okay, in your professional opinion, should I try and use an ensnare? Would that work on this creature? Or is he like goopy, flip out of the web and get me anyway? Um, he looks to be exceptionally strong and his body looked malleable. So you suspect that uh, a snare would be very difficult. Okay, then I'm just going to use my signature move, Penetrating Blast. Okay, so that, since it's your signature move, you can use an additional, spend a total of three hero point attack. I'll do that. Three hero point shots on my signature move to penetrate wherever the nuclei of his cell is. Ah, okay. So we are um, not going to napalm him. So I was thinking actually, of it, but I get an extra point if I use my penetration. Oh, so that, I'm gonna okay. So it doesn't have. Yeah, never mind. So he has a power flaw that um, if you shoot him in his head, uh, his invulnerability does not. So you you're aiming for the weak spot. So that will be a minus two penalty. So what's your action value? Okay, my action value. If I, okay, on your opinion, people. Should I do a fast attack or a power attack against this guy? It's a difference of two. Uh, you're burning hero points. I'd say do the power attack. I I vote power attack. I would think that you should want to do as much damage as possible. All right. I'm going to try and one-shot the guy. Yes. Power wow. attack is a 10 plus three hero points. Everything that I can. So that's 13. One minus two to try and hit his weak spot. Brings it down to 11. Uh Let's see, what is my defense in ranged combat? Sadly, that is his worst defense. He is great at defending against everything except range. So my defense, only three. I will spend three hero points to raise that to six. So you're at, um, let's see, so you were at uh, 14 minus, uh, sorry, you were at 10, 13, 11. Oh, you're still at plus five on the, that's going to be really bad. Well, I was hoping that Maria would be around to uh, to team attack with you, but it sounds like you got this. Roll well. No, if you can add one more to it, then I then I'm a six. Oh, Maria, Maria's dead. Remember, that's oh, I yeah. left her upstairs oh, that's, that's... to help you, but yeah, go for it. All right, fifty-seven. That is an orange result. What is your damage, sir? See, I wanted a red. I know. Uh, 384. Ooh, that is a, that is a healthy amount of damage on him. Um, okay. You guys realize how fast you would kick your own asses? I know! <laughs> <laughs> I only have 30 hit points for two. All right. Um, however, 384 is not enough to get the guy out. He has 600 health. Um, so you get, just do an incredible shot right into him. Um, flesh and Bone just just slew away in a horror show. He kind of staggers back, and then his all his multiple mouths all smile at you, toothy grins, and he says, Is that the best you've got with your little bow? Do I have any actions left to get out of the way so he cannot one-shot me back? Uh, you do not have any actions left. Uh, right Is now. he able to hero point to get, out, uh, to get an action to move out of the way or anything? Um, oh, yes, you can spend 10 hero points if you'd like to, to take an emergency action. 10 hero points to use an emergency action. Uh, I suppose I should, because I really need to not be in the way of his counterattack. Okay. So I'll do a hero backflip out of the way and try and hide again with my infiltration. Oh, nice. All right. Awesome. 
Okay, so you do it. You spend I ten have to five zero points left. Fantastic. Yep. Yep. Okay. And you are out of the way. Uh, so it goes to uh, Terra. Okay, are these twenty five hunter killer zombies that are coming after us here yet? Uh, they have not acted yet. They will be on. You. There is a barricade creating a chokehold, so only a couple of them can come at a time. All right, Correct. well, since we have uh, ascertained where the, the bad guys are and we have a line upstairs, uh, I guess I will go ahead and climb that line to try and lend support up there. All right, now here's a neat trick you can do. Um, so normally your scry is non trans so it doesn't, um, it, you can't use your powers through it. But as a power stunt, if you'd like, you can actually um, do a power stunt to do a transmitting scry, which would let you do your psionic mind, whatever you want. This sounds wonderful, as well as perhaps project a force field on a uh, poor arbalest. Correct. Okay. So let me just check real quick how many hero points take you to that. It two, two. Uh... How is that determined on how many hero points he'd have to spend to project? Logarithmically! <laughs> it's, the diff it's, it's based on the difference between uh, the power and the mod just applied to the power. Ah. Okay. So um, it will cost you five hero points. Okay, I'm down to 14. <laughs> worth it? No, worth it. Okay. <laughs> All so, right, so uh, you're force listen. field up on Arbalest. Boom, and, done. Uh, let's go ahead and... Um, Power strike this guy, and let's burn some hero points on that. So my power strike is normally an AB of nine. Okay, so you can spend up to three hero points, so you can get up to 12. Okay. Now here's where it gets really brutal. Why, why can he spend three when it's not a signature? Uh, because a uh, resolve, it's a, a third of our resolve. Ah, okay, I missed that. And, that's and why I'm, I'm assuming that two. means rounded up. That's rounded, correct. Yeah, that's why I'm stuck at two. Okay, my bad. Cool. Mm -hmm. Because, Alice, mm -hmm. because magic. <laughs> magic, yes. <laughs> That's, right. That's right, because I'm magic. Um, all right, so that puts you at 12. Uh, that's a very good place to be. Um, my, Not as good as 14, but, you know. My resolve is 7. However, you are surprising me. Uh, so wait. you get... What initiative is Tarot on? 7. Uh, you, we missed Alice at 14 somehow. Oh, I'm so sorry. No so do you want to have Alice be holding right now, or do you want to do something? Um, we're going, well, I wanted to actually go and uh, shoot some of them. I'll just hold, yeah. We don't okay. have enemies on us yet. You have a barricade in the way. Yeah, I'm going to just hold. Okay, so I'll make sure to remember that you get to go before they do. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, Dr. Cancer is at seven. He is surprised by your attack, so that drops him down to five. He will spend three hit points to go up to eight. So you are, what do we say, plus 12 four. to 8. So you're plus 4. Did, did he spend a lot of years at cancer medical school to get that degree? <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> uh, I have an odd 7! My best oh! roll of the night. Uh, so okay. at plus 4, odd 7 is red. That is savage. Okay. So, How much damage Red is that? on a power mind blast is 1,024. <laughs> I think I will roll with that attack. Here I thought I was doing good, shooting him in the face. Uh, what? Let's see. Um, one, two. All right, so I'm going to roll to reduce that down to 120, but that makes me overwhelmed, so I cannot act next oh, round. Oh, also, disorientation. And you have disoriented me because you triggered a special effect. That is correct. All right, so... He is in a he is in very bad shape um, and uh, is confused. Has no idea where any um, can barely defend himself. That was pretty effective. Okay, Alice, over to you. Okay. Um, do I have enough to target, even though they're not on us? You're so fast. You could certainly just go target them. Great. I mean, so park you're so over fast my barricade you to. and come back. Okay. I was going to say, you're so fast, if you wanted to, you could go hit Dr. Cancer. <laughs> Just you know punch what? Him. Let's, let's go punch Dr. Cancer and then come back. Okay, so you are allowed to do that. So that's so what's that? what that's called is you're declaring a challenge action, mm -hmm. where your challenge action takes place as part of your movement. 
Okay, so you are allowed to do that. Okay. Now, the trick, however, is that even if you fail or things don't go the way you like, you continue your move. That's fine. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, All right, so you're going to run up and run, and back. run back. Yep, that's fine. Okay. Um, yep. And so I'm going to do a concussive boom, the, the concussive strike sonic boom. I'm going to go with a power strike. Um, I am parkouring, so do I get to add parkour to my attack on this? No, it's just okay. defensive. Just defensive. Cool. So, um, yeah, that's a power strike. That's a nine. Um, I am going to spend two hero points, so I'm down to ten. So that brings me up to an eleven. What? Uh, what is our difference? Eleven versus what? And I'll roll my oh, dice. Oh goodness gracious! And um, I rolled a thirty-seven. Did you spend any hero points? You did. I did. I spent two. Okay. Uh, all right, so I am currently uh, disoriented, so my initiative is reduced, so I can't really respond, um, and you are surprising me, so hang on for partial sure surprise. So partial surprise gives you an additional plus four. Ooh. That's brutal. All right, so you're at 50. Uh, I'm at 10. I'm going to spend two of my, three of my hero points to bring that up to 12. So, okay. um, sorry, to 13. So you're at plus two. Okay, three point difference. 37 is the, the top end of orange then. So, so you got to know orange? I did 256. Oh, sorry. No, I did, uh, I did orange 512. Oh, all right. So normally when I get hit with an orange result, I would roll that to green and then I would, um, to reduce the amount of damage I've taken. But... Because I'm overwhelmed, I can no longer roll. So I have to take it, which means I have to take the 512 damage. I've already taken 384, so now I have taken uh, 996 points of damage, I, and I, I am don't out think of the this, fight. Yeah, I don't think that CDC doctor is going to be too happy with us. Okay. <laughs> punched him for 500 damage? Is that just... I, I, awesome. I punched him for 512. I did ask for the striker of the group, so you I should did. be the DPS, yes. You I said did. I wanted a striker with out of the box capabilities, and that's certainly what I'm doing is being out of the box. That's correct. Okay, so um, he was already badly wounded from the arrow that had, you know, blown away part of his face. Uh, he was completely overwhelmed by the mind blast, and the last thing he was equipped for was having someone come in at 1,000 miles per hour to punch him in the face. Punch and him in the gonads. Uh, okay, so you literally just punch into the gonad area, and there is sickening pop, like on those um, those uh, uh, those doctor medical videos where they pop zits on oh YouTube. Oh my gosh! Oh gosh! I don't even watch those, but I know. It's and um, just whoosh, like that, and he topples over, and then all around the the room where you guys are waiting for the attack to come, the cancer zombies plummet over. Woohoo! Uh, I, I work at the hospital, and so I literally go into patients' rooms, and that is what they're watching, is those zit-popping things. And I'm just yes. like, oh my god, really? Yes, yes, oh my Hi. god. Okay, what? glorious. So, what do you guys want to do? Um, well, I do need to get going my, okay. and check on children's stuff. Uh, so, <laughs> if we're we done with the adventure, time. I should probably sign off. Are we... Is there much else to do? Do we carry the body out and we we get our compound, we get it out, and uh, we we bring him and uh, search for any other survivors. Though I'm expecting the janitor that we've already gotten out was probably the only one that made it. Yeah, he was the only one. So you find um, you find Jack Ferrucci, the security guard, was um, on the in the first floor security room. Um, he had been he was killed just after he triggered the alarm. And then you find the body of Bob Baker, the janitor, uh, torn apart limb from limb at the main entrance, trying to escape. Um, and then you find um, in uh, the break room inside the refrigerator, Alice Wilson was hiding and she froze to death. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, well. But other than that, it was a big success. Yeah. <laughs> well, before we close up, let's do quick, uh, quick feedback on it. So why don't we Told start you. with... Uh, why don't we start with Alex? What's your what's your impression of the group that uh, that you had today? Uh, you guys made it a total blast. Um, I love when people get into the characters and kind of ad lib the one liners, really role play. I think combat in general and all role playing is so much 
people do that. So love that. And all of you took to your characters really well. I mean, it was, it was tons of fun to run. So thank you for having me on the show. Thank you very much for coming on and thank you for making fun characters for us. And why don't we go to Adam next? Well, I think now that we're at the end, I finally figured out how this mechan these mechanics work. Um, I must admit, I'm not sure what logarithms actually even are. So when you say it's a simple logarithmic system, that means nothing to me. All it means is each point is double. So a strength of six is twice as strong as a strength of five. A strength of seven is twice as strong as a strength of six, etc. Okay. So if I did not have the charts in front of me, I would never have been able to play this game. But as long as I have the charts in front of me, it's a very interesting system. Um, I'd be, I'm curious to see more and see what all how the rest of this works out. I mean, we didn't even get to the fact that my character apparently has a wealth of 80 or something. Yes, but yes. You're, you're, you're like Green Arrow. You're a, bi you know, you're a billionaire. Awesome. You're just kind of doing this for fun. <laughs> well, Brandon, what about you? Uh, I, I am waiting to get a book so that I can put characters together because I see points being thrown around all over this character sheet, and I'm like, I want to spend those points. Uh, it's a great time. It really does remind me of the times that I've played Phase Rip, brought up to a, a, a more modern sensibility, basically. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I marvel at the fact that the two of you with 30 and 60 hit points think that you should be doing this. <laughs> I mean, Alice, you killed 75% of the non-camera crew that you brought in here. No, only 50%. I had Alice oh. in. I had oh, Alice okay. and Apollo at the end. Apollo was down at the barricade. I had a, I only killed 50% of my character. No see, wonder you, at the beginning I was like, hey, Jude, it's like, oh, I haven't seen you since last time you died. <laughs> so how do you think I feel? She has at least like four lives, you know, 30 hit points with four lives. I didn't understand until the moment I was staring down the big bad guy with my pea shooter that I was one hit. And I didn't have backups. Arbalest, you do have, uh, you, you do have physical invulnerability at 10. So you have some armor that she does. Okay, that makes me feel a little better about being a rich kid who decided to do this for fun, not realizing he was one shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have you. So, so you would ignore, for instance, most bullets and things like that. Um, he does hit pretty hard, so you take some damage, but he wouldn't one hit you because of your invulnerability. Um, okay. What happened I was with? Really worried what, about you, man. What happened with Alice's build was that duplication is really expensive because uh -huh. you're multiplying the power of your character. And super speed is really expensive because it lets you hit faster, hit harder, be harder to hit, move faster, and also do any sort of action um, with extra time, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so as a result, I like spent all of her points on that. And I was like, well, I guess she doesn't have any armor. I'm a glass well, But it makes sense. Yeah. It makes total sense with a duplicating speedster. Yes. It is exactly. that, you know, you have this resource that you can just keep throwing in as long as the real you survives. You just have to live with the trauma. Yeah. And I'm a glass cannon. And you can ask Brandon. I play plenty of glass cannon. So I know how that works. Uh, and that's that's cool. And I love glass cannons myself. They're my favorite character build. Yeah. Me too. I, just, I think they're so fun. Well, as for me, I obviously had a blast. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on and running this for us. And I'm glad that we got a last minute table together. I definitely want to see more. I'm already pledged, as you know, and I can't wait to see more about this game. So thank well, you so I will much. Send you guys a, I will send you guys a copy of the playtest rules. Um, and uh, if you want to build characters or whatever, uh, totally happy to, um, to, to give you guys all the, the full 350 page rule. Um, as a sneak preview. Well, thank oh, you. Oh, wow. Much. Fantastic. <laughs> and for everybody else, thank you for joining us on BWK, and see you all next time. Bye.